In this video, I'm going to show you how to safely self-pop your hips and lower back for instant tightness and pain relief. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, Dr. Rowe coming to you from Spine Care in St. Joseph, Michigan. In this video, we're going to go over really easy exercises that can safely self-pop, crack, or release your hips and your back. Each one of these exercises works just a little bit differently. To get the best results, go through them all and use what works best for you. A quick note, these are not chiropractic adjustments. They don't serve to replace chiropractic adjustments. Instead, they're simple range of motion exercises that may end in a satisfying self-pop, crack, or release. With that being said, let's get started. For this hip and back popping exercise, we're going to start lying flat on our back in bed or on a floor. What we're going to do first is take our feet, press them together, and then gently press them downward into the bed or the floor. To make the exercise a little bit easier though, you might want to scoot your heels towards your butt as much as you can. From here, you're going to take your hands and place them on the inside of your knees or the inner part of your thighs. And you're just going to take your hands and press your knees downward towards the floor. Do this slowly though, because you're going to feel a great stretch form on the inner part of your thighs that works towards the groin into the hips. Keep pressing down till you feel a deep but comfortable stretch into your hips. This helps put the hips into external rotation and if your hips are locked up, you might get that sudden pop, crack, or release that you're looking for, but don't try to force it. Instead, hold this for five seconds, release it, and then repeat this 10 to 15 times. And with each repetition, try to build into it just a little bit more. Afterwards, see how you feel. If it feels like it needs a little bit more, you can throw some more repetitions in, but if you got that pop that you're looking for, you're good to go. But another movement that you can try and this one is going to focus a little bit more on the lower back is by doing this. Let's have our legs roughly hip width apart, knees bent, feet flat. What you want to do is take one side's ankle and place on the other side's knee, right on the outside of that knee. And then what you're going to do is take this top leg right here and just hook that bent knee and pull it across your body just like this. What you want to do is keep pulling that knee over just to the point where you feel a really good stretch form on the outside of your hip right here and then just hold this comfortably for about five seconds and then release it. But this is how we're going to take this one to the next level. On the next repetition, let's pull over just like this, but take the hand that's on this bent knee side and hook right behind that knee and just use your hand to passively pull just a little bit more to the point where you now feel that stretch forming in the hip, but now working up into the lower back. And this one, you're going to feel a great stretch into the lower back. And if it's locked up, you might get the hip or the lower back to finally pop or release. But again, don't try to force it. Five second hold, we're going to release it and then repeat this 10 to 15 times. And then from there, switch to the other side and repeat to help keep everything in balance. Here's a really unique exercise that can end in a satisfying self pop, crack, or release. Whatever side that you feel is the most locked up, let's say it's your left side, what you're going to do is start in a lunge position. So take the other leg and step forward like this, bend that knee like this, keep the other leg straight. And you're just going to lunge your body weight forward until you feel a really good activation of the muscles around this back hip. Once you feel that, you're going to hold this position, take your hands, put them on your hips, and now start to do the Elvis. So we want to do is really focus on moving through this back hip and start to do circular motions. It's like if you had a hula hoop around that hip, you're just going to keep moving into that movement, get that hip all shook up and hopefully get everything released to the point where it pops, cracks or releases. But I like to just keep doing this over and over again for about 10 to 15 repetitions. And you're going to find when you do this that one certain movement, like when I swing into it on my right side, it just feels the most tight and achy at that point just keep building into that over and over again and you might finally get it to loosen up and pop or release but what I like to do also is try different movements so if I'm doing this counterclockwise I kind of do it clockwise you can also go forward with it backward off to the side just experiment with as many different movements as possible until you finally get it to release or everything is nice and loose. Just remember, whatever you do on one side, switch to the other side and repeat to help keep everything 
imbalance. This exercise is what I call the lunge and twist. Not only is it good at opening up the hips, but it can offer satisfying self pops pretty much throughout the whole back. So to get into position, we're going to start on a floor in a lunge position. If you want to focus on the side that's most locked up, that knee is going to be out front. And if you do have knee sensitivity, make sure to grab a pillow or towel to place underneath this back knee. But what we want to do first is just have very good upright posture. Have your back as straight as possible. You're going to take your hands, put them in a pre your position and then just gently press them into your chest to help keep your back nice and supported. From here you're going to take the elbow on the side of this front knee and you're going to place it right on the inside of that knee and just gently press your elbow into the knee and press that knee out just a little bit until you feel a little bit of a stretch forming on the inner part of your thigh working towards the groin into the hip. Once we feel that we're going to hold this position and really now take it to the next level by slowly turning through our lower back and waist towards the other side. So it's almost kind of like looking behind you like this. As you turn into it, you're going to feel a great stretch form in your lower back. And if it's locked up, you might get a pop in your hip, sacroiliac SI joint all the way up into the lower back, but don't try to force it. Just feel that deep stretch, hold this for five seconds, release it, and then repeat this a couple more times. And with each repetition, just try to build into it just a little bit more. If you're looking to go up a little bit further into the upper back, what you want to do is just turn your shoulders like this. Oh, I don't know if you just heard it right there. Wow, I just got a huge pop in my lower back. But you just want to keep building into that a little bit more until you feel the stretch work into the upper back. But give that one a try. Just remember, whatever you do on one side, switch legs and repeat to help keep everything in balance. Here's a really good exercise that you can do seated that may end in that satisfying self pop. Whatever side that you feel is the most locked up, let's say it's your right side, take that side's ankle and place over your other side's knee. So when you look down, it should look like a figure four. This first movement is going to target more into the hip. The first thing that we want to do though is just to have our whole body nice and loose. Don't try to tense any muscles in your leg, hip, or your back. Just have everything nice and relaxed. From here, we're going to keep our back nice and straight and then slowly lower our chest downward towards the floor. Do this one slowly because you're going to feel a great stretch form in your hip. And if it's locked up, you might get that sudden pop. But just build into this one to the point where you feel a comfortable stretch. Hold this for about five seconds and then release it. And then repeat this five times. And with each repetition, try to build into it just a little bit more. If you feel like your hip is right on the verge of finally being able to release, but it's just not quite there, to take this one to the next level, what you can do is lower your chest downward, take two fingers and just put them right on this bent knee and just gently press that knee downward. But do this one slowly because it's going to quickly intensify the stretch and we don't want to cause any pain or discomfort. So give that one a try. So if you would like to focus a little bit more into the lower back, this is what you can do. Let's get back into that original stretch of pushing our knee down towards the floor like this, but this time around we're going to have very good upright posture. And you're just going to lean towards the other side, moving through your waist and your lower back. This time around you're going to feel that stretch work from your hip into your lower back. And again, if it's locked up, you might get that pop. But just go for a deep, comfortable stretch, hold this for about five seconds, release it, and then repeat this five times. Afterwards, switch legs and repeat to help keep everything imbalance. This is a modified corkscrew exercise and it's a personal favorite for many because it's really easy to do and it usually ends in a satisfying self pop crack or release. Let's start lying flat on our back in bed or on a floor. Whatever side feels like it's the most locked up, let's say it's our right side, we're going to straighten the other leg out like this and then keep that side's knee bent and take the foot and place right on the outside of that knee and kind of take your foot and press into the knee so it is like a stable anchor point, but you also want to slide your foot close to your butt. That way you're going to be able to grab the outside of this knee. But take the hand on the other side, grab right on the outside of your knee, and what you're going to do is just slowly pull that knee across your body until you feel a deep stretch form on the outside of your hip. You just wanna hold this for about five seconds and then release. On the next repetition though, take it a little bit further. You want to pull that knee across your body until you feel now that stretch working from your hip into your lower back. 
Once you feel it in the lower back, hold this for five seconds. And if it is locked up, you might get a couple pops on the way up to your lower back, but don't try to force anything. I like to do this just nice and slowly for about five to 10 repetitions. And with each repetition, just building into it a little bit more. If it feels like it's on the verge of wanting to release, but it's not quite there yet, you can add in a little bit more of a passive push to finally get that deeper stretch. So for this one, what you do is just get back into that original stretch, build as much tension as you can, and then take the other hand and just cup around your butt cheek. And what you're going to do is hook that knee, pull it down and press at the other time. So let me switch sides so you can see this a little bit better. So I'm going to hook that knee, get that stretch into my hip, into my lower back. Once I feel that, let's cup around the butt cheek and just gently press into it like this. But do this one slowly because again, you're gonna get a very deep stretch. Five second hold, let's release it, repeat this five to 10 times. Another variation that targets the muscles a little bit differently, and you might get it to uh, finally release, is by doing this. So instead of going straight across your body, what I like to do is cup around my knee, just gently pull it up towards my chest until I feel a good stretch over that butt cheek, and then I'm going to take this knee and pull it across my body towards my other side shoulder. So I'm pulling my right knee towards my left shoulder. You should feel a really good stretch form on the sit bone area. And then once you feel that, hold this position and now pull your knee across your body. It's going to hit the area around the hip just a little bit differently. And you may find that this will finally get that hip to release. But it's just a five second hold, relax, repeat this about five to 10 times. And I do recommend doing this on both sides to help keep everything in balance. If the exercise has helped, please support the channel by giving this video a like and maybe subscribing too. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching.